like DC Comics and I have a variety of disabilities. Here's an analysis of the team and how their arcs mirror those of many disabled people. Cliff's arc touches on something a lot of disabled people experience, but that isn't talked about much. FOMO. Fear of missing out. But you gotta kill Nazis. This shouldn't be controversial. Jane appears to have a real condition, DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. Dissociative Identity Disorder used to be known by the name Multiple Personality Disorder. It's characterized by having two or more distinct identities or personality states. But it's also important to note that Jane's condition is different to actual DID as it is in the real world. Obviously this is a sensational and over-the-top example, but this is also a universe where there's a really buff alien who flies around who can shoot lasers out of his eyes and has a really cold breath, so. Jane's DID, while uncontrollable, almost becomes a revolutionary anti-fascist praxis to her. And this is very much in line with disability theory. While many disabled people might feel bad that they might not be able to go out and egg fascists or otherwise partake in anti-fascist or revolutionary practices, just being alive when you're different could be an act of resistance. Especially when you're something society doesn't want to exist, and considering this universe has a full-on department of normalcy that tries eliminating the weird, just existing as a not-normal person kinda is an act of rebellion. See also Danny the Street. While Jane probably wants relief from her trauma and depression and anxiety and the negative emotions she has, she doesn't really seem to want a cure for the many personalities. She respects them, and were it not for the fact that society isn't structured for people who have 64 personalities which all have superpowers, and if the reason for those personalities wasn't intense trauma, I don't think she'd necessarily have much of a problem with them aside from annoyances like, I don't know, maybe Hammerhead doesn't flush the toilet or something. And Karen, her showing up isn't a good time, but more on that in a sec. Obviously, Jane doesn't want to suffer. No one does. But she doesn't think she needs to sacrifice all the other personalities in order to be okay. Or she thinks that's unethical and respects the right to exist. She would need to sacrifice them in order to be normal. But Jane's a cool punk rock Antifa chick. She doesn't want to be normal. And she shouldn't, necessarily. Mental health shouldn't be striving for normalcy. It should strive to keep anyone from being or getting hurt. If you have depression and anxiety, those things are probably hurting you, and they should therefore be fixed. But you could contrast that with, say, the autistic or deaf communities who typically don't want to be fixed or normal, but rather just want acceptance for who they are. Their struggles come from a lack of accommodations. This is called the social model of disability, while a focus on cures and such is the medical model. There are some disabilities and conditions where people seem to find the medical model downright offensive. I mentioned autism and deafness, and many people in those communities reject the idea of cures. On the other hand, I have chronic pain, and that shit sucks. I think the social model will always have some validity to it, because all disabilities have problems with access, but I think that the medical model can maybe be valid in some instances for some conditions and some people, but the problem is I feel like a lot of able-bodied people assume the medical model is the best way to go, when really, in reality, it really isn't. Episode 3, Puppet Patrol, makes Jane's anti-cure ideology very clear. Von Fuchs, who is a Nazi, literal Nazi, offers to cure Jane. When Jane passes, Larry gladly accepts, but boy, we'll get to Larry. Von Fuchs tells Jane that we should pursue science at any cost, which is the kind of arguments that pro-cure people would use. However, Jane does have a personality that craves normalcy. Karen desires a stereotypical 90s rom-com coupling with Doug. I think it's telling that Jane's normal personality is aggressively heterosexual and has blonde hair and blue eyes, and is named Karen, which, as we all know, is the whitest and most neurotypical name. The less normal personalities, like Hammerhead, can't stand Karen. Her line, If that dick gets anywhere near my fucking bush, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Okay? And if I get fucked, you get fucked. Really says something about bodily autonomy and consent when 64 people share a body. But on the other hand, it's kind of sad that Karen can't live the normal life she wants because it would impede on the abilities and autonomy of the others. Karen probably feels like she has to mind control people because she doesn't have the time to form a real relationship with Doug or whoever. Not to say she's right to manipulate people like that. I just feel bad for the girl. Jane also gives us some history on how people with mental health conditions were treated, especially around the 70s. Jane is abused by staff, and when they fall victim to her alter, Dr. Harrison's power of suggestion and digging into people's heads, they send her off to be lobotomized. 
joking about the state she's going to be in when she gets back. She's saved Jane, but unfortunately, many people who have chronic health problems and mental illnesses were lobotomized with disastrous results. And God, am I lucky to not be alive in that time period. I'd love living in the future. According to this NPR article, many people who received the transorbital lobotomy seem to lose their ability to feel intense emotions, appearing childlike and less prone to worry. But the results were variable. According to Dr. Elliot Valenstein, a neurologist who wrote a book about the history of lobotomies, some patients seemed to improve, some became vegetables, some appeared unchanged, and others died. Jane's story shows us how bad mental health care was back in the day and doesn't shy away from her medical abuse. Hey, you know who else on the team went through medical abuse? Larry and Jane don't have lots of stories together, and they don't particularly interact much, but they're kind of foils to each other. Why do you hurt? Nobody's, nobody's attacking you. It's fine. We're fine. Stop it. 